Hello guys and welcome to another video. I'm pretty sure almost none of you have ever read my YouTube bio. In fact, I'm pretty sure 99% of you didn't even know that a YouTube bio was a thing that existed. Well, I'm here to tell you that it does. And if you look at mine, you will see that it states that this channel is 50% Percy Jackson and 100% bookish. A promise that was true once upon a time on my channel. If you look back through my old videos, I used to post a Percy Jackson related video followed by a non-specific book related video. However, when the Percy Jackson TV show was coming up, I started making a lot more Percy Jackson focused content. And once the show was out, I just kept riding that Percy Jackson content wave until basically today. Don't get me wrong, I love, love, love making Percy Jackson related videos, but I do consider myself to be a booktube channel. I know, insane. I'm not just a Percy Jackson channel. No, 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 I'm not just the Percy Jackson channel. I'm also a booktuber. So since there's so many of you out there who have never known me as a regular booktuber, I thought it was a perfect moment to do the get to know me book tag and just talk about books that I love and recommend really, 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 really great books and actually some trash reads as well. So without further ado, let's get into the tag. Number one, what is my favorite color and do I have a book in said color? I'm a basic girly. It's blue. Sky blue slash baby blue are my favorite ones. Without even having to look for a book, you can see that I have many blue books in my rainbow shelf but today I want to talk about the hardcover special edition of red white and royal blue by Casey McKinston if you know me at all you know that this is one of my favorite books ever one of if not my favorite contemporary romance this book I would consider to be a new adult book following the lives and the romance between the first son of the United States and the Prince of England which is already just like such a good premise, but I promise you this is so much more than the sum of its parts and the characters are incredible. The story is just so special, so important, and also so funny, which is one of my top criteria when ranking books. It also is a little bit spicy. I don't know how they didn't even think to make a book called Red, White, and Royal Blue, either Red, White, or Royal Blue in one of their editions until the special edition, but this book was pink at first, which makes no sense. Number two, describe yourself in three book characters. The first character would be Chubbs from The Darkest Minds, an oldie but a goodie. Then Keefy from The Lost Hero. If you think it's pronounced Keef, you can fight me in the comments. I will not accept that it's Keef. He's Keefy. Keefy from The Lost, what are you? From Keeper of Velocities. Don't worry, there's a girl coming. I almost picked three male characters, but I was like, no, <laughs> please restrain yourself. So the last character we have here is Thalia. And this is right, I also refuse to say Thalia because it sounds too close to how people pronounce my name in English. So Thalia from Percy Jackson, The Olympians. Specifically, Talia in book three. Obviously she doesn't do much here. Let me know in the comments down below if you know any characters that I remind you of. I promise to try not to be offended. Number three, hyped books, yay or nay. Based on my personal past experiences, I'm going to have to go with yay because I was in booktube way back in 2016 when the Six of Crows, when the Six of Crows book came out and I saw it everywhere. Every single one of the booktubers that I followed was picking up this book and loving it. I was like, I need to be on trend. I need to read this and it changed my life. This is one of my favorite books of all time, one of my favorite book series ever. If you're wondering if I recommend this to you, I do. Yes, 2024, you should still read this. It holds up. It has one of the best found family ever, one of the best ships ever, and the characters are also interesting. It has multiple POVs and the heist in this is just Oscar level worthy. On the other hand, there are certain books that are very hyped on booktube, but I think specifically on book talk that are not very, really good. I'm talking about books by authors like Ali Hazelwood and her love hypothesis. Yes, I have read this because I heard it was a Raylo fan fiction and just from looking at the cover that was confirmed for me. So I read this and I was like, wow, this is absolute trash. This is so bad. Don't get me wrong. It was very entertaining and it was very easy to read. So every once in a while, I do enjoy picking up a book like this. However, I know it adds nothing to my life and to my journey throughout my own existence. So it's just for funsies every once in a while. I know it's never going to be good. I know it's going to add nothing to my intelligence. Maybe it will subscribe for my intelligence, in fact, but it will add to my enjoyment of the moment. Let me know if you've read Fourth Wing down below because I know people either love that or hate it and that's probably one of the most hyped books of 2023. Number four, recommend one book per season. Starting with spring, I would recommend the Fallen Kingdom series. This is a fantasy series that has six books and it has so many, many messy romances in it 
that you're gonna want to pick it up. And I think it's a perfect spring read, specifically because the second book has spring in the title. And I feel like spring is the perfect time to pick up a fantasy series. The romances, the medieval vibes, everything just gives up spring and new life. And for summer, I had to pick The Sea of Monsters because for some reason, might be the sea factor in all of this, it's the beachiest vibe. This is the summeriest book that Rick Riordan has ever written. And you can't think of summer and not think of a Percy Jackson book. Next up, we have The Fall, and I chose Only Mostly Devastated. This is a YA contemporary book that is kind of like a retelling of the Grease movie. But instead, the girl being Australian and the guy being American, they're gay. This book is so good. It's one of my favorite contemporaries. Definitely top five. And I chose this for fall because they are starting the school year, so perfect timing. Lastly, we have Winter, and I do not own this book, but my recommendation for winter is to read Ice Planet Barbarians. If you don't know what that is, well, I wish I were as mentally stable as you are, but unfortunately, I'm in a different part of the internet. I'm not going to explain Ice Planet Barbarians, but from the cover, I bet you can tell, and from the name, well, even more. So, perfect winter read to keep you warm. Number five, one book that wrecked me emotionally. Where do I start? When I was reading the prompts for this book tag, I knew immediately after reading this one that I was going to have to talk about Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. My friend Erica gifted me this book back in 2016 in our first year of college, and I read it and I really enjoyed it, but I didn't understand it. The story didn't click with me, it didn't sink in until I read it last summer, again, for the second time. It had been a six years since I had last read this, so I had a very vague sense of what happened in the story, but I had mostly forgotten every single important thing. And I reread this, I don't know if it was just the summer vibes, the emptiness of life at that moment for me, it just changed my brain chemistry. I don't think a book has ever done that for me in the way that this book has, and I say that as the biggest Percy Jackson lover. Yes, the Percy Jackson books made me a book lover and a reader for life. This changed the fundamental way that my brain worked and I'm not even kidding. When I started reading from Dante's point of view, I was like, this man knows something that I don't. He is figuring out the secrets of the universe and I want to be right there with him. Why did I reread this book? Well, it was to actually pick this one up because I wanted to remember what happened. This is Aristotle and Dante dive into the waters of the world and this one, while not as good as this, wrecked me emotionally and I think I even cried with this. If you know me, you know I don't cry with books. I sob at any movie imaginable. I even cry sometimes watching Instagram reels or even commercials, but I never cry while reading. I don't know, some piece of me is broken. My tear ducts and the page just don't connect. But with this, might have been that I was laying down on my side, which always helps the tears roll down more smoothly. But this wrecked me. These are the two perfect summer reads if you want to be depressed a little bit, but then find the light at the end of the tunnel. Pick these two up. This is so good! And they will make you cry. Number six, name a book that you always recommend. Obviously, I'm gonna have to go with Percy Jackson because I would recommend that to almost anybody. But one of the books that I've recommended the most has to be Daisy Jones and the Six. It's just that good. It's probably the audiobook that I've recommended the most to people because it's iconic and it is the moment. Number seven, what book would you recommend with tea and cookies? I don't I don't like tea. I love cookies though. So for that, I would recommend reading Carry On. In case you don't know, Carry On is like a parody of Harry Potter if Harry Potter had fallen in love with Draco Malfoy in book seven. It's its own thing, but that is the premise of the book. The magic system is so interesting. All the characters are just so lovable. And Simon and Bass are one of my top five OTPs ever, definitely top 10. Why am I recommending this with tea and cookies? Well, just like Harry Potter, the Carry On universe is based in England, so they love the tea and cookies. However, I cannot in good conscience recommend that you eat cookies while you read a book because I have been known to leave like little chocolate marks in my books sometimes because you get your fingers dirty and you have to pass the pages. If you want to snack while you read, I would recommend 
Grapes, perfect snack, and they don't get everything dirty. Number, whoop, too much. Number eight, what is your favorite guilty pleasure book? I didn't think I was one for guilty pleasures, but lately I am, maybe it's my old age. But my first one and one that I'm very, very deeply ashamed of is The Host by Stephanie Meyer. Now, I read this right after watching the movie because obviously I was a teen when the movie came out and I was instantly obsessed. It was also the first time I listened to Radioactive and I sat there in the cinema being like, this is changing my life. This is the greatest song of all time. But I picked this up when I was deep into my dystopian era right after reading The Hunger Games and I had never read or watched The Twilight Saga so this was completely new to me and I just fell in love with it because this book, in case you don't know, is so messy. It has a love square. This is the one of the guys, this is one of the guys, and this is two of the girls. They're both in love with her but two different versions of her because in her head is an alien who is possessing her body. So the original person here, the host, <laughs> cannot control the body or what they're saying. They just have like a, a telepathic conversations in her mind. So this guy is in love with her body and the person trapped inside her head and he is in love with the alien taking over the body and the alien is in love with both of them it's just so messy but i love it and i thought i wouldn't like it as much as an adult but i reread it like two years ago i was like damn <laughs> why do i still like this age differences are kind of iffy i know this isn't the best book and i know it's like super long and it takes a while to get started but it always gets me and ever since last year or the year before when i read the foxhole court i always want to bring these up in conversation because i have never read a worse trilogy in my life but i have also never loved trash as much as i've loved this trash and i'm so confused because i don't know why every time i talk about this book series i bring up this goodreads review it's perfection it knows what these books are like the things that these books talk about like drugs addiction prescription medication it's sports like the author did absolutely no research she knows nothing about it her sister did the covers and i don't know who did the interior design well actually i do because they're self-published i know that nobody did them but when i first got them and i opened the book i was like did i just download a freaking pdf i could even format it better than this there's not a straight line look at the chapter it feels like i'm reading a fucking pdf so i would not recommend you buying this book I cannot on my good conscience recommend that you read them at all, but also I love them. I got so obsessed that I read each of them in a day and a half. I had cleared my way through these in a fucking week and I fell into the rabbit hole of this fandom. Surprisingly, half of the fandom is Russian. If you're looking for fan art, you will know what I'm talking about. These books are both so good and so bad. Oh, it also talks about the mafia and it knows absolutely nothing about that. They're so bad, but I love them so much. And all the characters are terrible. They're all so problematic. Like some of the things that happen are like, this is literally illegal, straight to jail, straight to fucking jail. But I still, there's something about Neil and Andrew that just reels me in, God damn it. So don't, don't read them. But at the same time, I need someone to suffer through them with me because they're so bad, but I love them. I will never defend these books, by the way, never. But I will read them again and again and again. Number nine, what is your favorite dessert and what book reminds you of it. My favorite dessert is cheesecake and honestly none of my books remind me of cheesecake so I'm going to go with to all the boys I've loved before. I know our main character is more of a cookies or cupcakes kind of gal but she's constantly baking throughout the trilogy and I thought that was the perfect segue for this. I haven't talked about this book in a while but I fell in love with the characters when I first saw the movie and then I read the trilogy and I generally really enjoyed it. I still think the movies are more enjoyable maybe because I saw them first but the books are still so good, so messy, so entertaining. If you're looking for some light teenage drama with some very interesting romances and sister dynamics, which I always enjoy, then the To All The Boys trilogy is for you. And it also has some recipes at the end of the book, which I always love. I didn't know anyone besides Geronimo Stilton did that. And I think that should be a trend. Any book that mentions a recipe should include it at the end of the book. Number 10, are you a procrastinator? And if so, what book are you procrastinating? Yes, I am a procrastinator in life and in books, but that's just because I'm a mood reader. So right now I'm doing a readathon of all the books in the Percy Jackson series 
and it's time to read the Heroes of Olympus. And I should have picked the, the last hero like last week, but I haven't because I'm not strong enough. And also if I pick that one up, it means I have to pick the next one up next because I love to marathon series, winning it out. And also Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. My friend McKenna has been trying to get me to read that book for so long because obviously we both love Lee, but me specifically. But I don't want to pick it up until the last one in the series comes out because as I said, I love marathon in books. So I feel like if I read the first two, then I'm gonna be left wanting to read the last one. And I don't want to read the last one without remembering without having the other two fresh in my mind. So what that leads is to a loop where I don't read any of them or if I read them then I'm gonna have to read them like a hundred times so I actually remember by the time the last one comes out. So I'm just here waiting for Ali to announce the date of the last one to prepare for that. But I wouldn't say I'm a procrastinator, just a mood reader, you know? Number 11, I don't have enough fingers for that anymore. How many books is too many for a series? Oh my goodness, I love this question! I don't know if you can tell from my bookshelf, specifically here, here, and here, but I love book series. I will take book series over standalones any day of the week, any day of the month, any day of the freaking year. Why? Because I love characters first and foremost. So the more I get of a character, the more involved I am in whatever story it is. And the more books you have, well then the more you have of that character, you know, unless they die. So here I mostly have like trilogies, some duologies, and some four book series. And those are all fine, but to me, I think as a fantasy lover, five, six books is the perfect amount in a book series. More than six, I think that just becomes an extended universe. I don't think I've ever read a series that has more than six books that is not an extended universe and yes I am looking at you Cassandra Clare and Rick Riordan when I say this. I guess the Harry Potter series does has seven books but the first books are so short that it doesn't change things that much. But if we go a little bit higher up on my bookshelf you will see that I have a lot of six book series and I think that just works really well. Four is also a good number and I tend to like four book series over trilogies. Also I've been on the hunt for a good fantasy series whether it's YA, new adult, if you know any that has a good adventure, a good plot, and very juicy romance, then please give me recommendations down below. If it's found family, you get extra points. So go do that. Please, please give me the Rex. Number 12, how do you feel about cliffhangers? Now, I personally am a survivor of the 2013 cliffhanger called The Mark of Athena. That's right, I read The Mark of Athena a couple of months or just weeks after it had come out, and I had to wait for a whole year to find out what happened in the House of Hades, only to open the book and make read it by the following message. To my wonderful readers, sorry about the last cliffhanger. Well, no, not really, ha ha ha. But seriously, I love you guys. Not an ounce of remorse coming from this guy. So while cliffhangers really hurt, especially when you read a book series as it's being published, I think it's still worth it. It's just very, really good. It grips you, it holds onto you, and it makes you really, really want to read the next book in the series. And that's why now in 2024, I refuse to start series that aren't done. I love series, so I will pick it up once it's over, which is sad because you don't enjoy the full fandom experience and the joy of reading books as they come out. So my rule is kind of flexible. I just haven't read a series in a while, honestly, but that's why I do it. I love marathoning series. I just want to get to a cliffhanger and be like, oh my God, that's such, such a terrible cliffhanger. And I could just pick up the next book because the same thing happened to me with the Six of Crows cliffhanger and oh my goodness, that destroyed me. For over a year, I don't know how long it took for her to publish Crooked Kingdom. Number 13, hardback or paperback? The answer to this has changed in my old age and I started to be a reader slash book collector when I was 13. So I've had 12 years to develop this opinion. At first, I was all about those hard books because they just felt more fancy. They feel more sturdy in your hand and they're usually more expensive. So you're like, obviously the best option is the more expensive option. However, as someone who rearranges her bookshelves from time to time and who has had to move with books, I am here to tell you that paperbacks are superior. Number one, they are easier to travel with. They weight less, they are smaller, therefore they don't occupy as much space, and they are more bendable. 
So number two, they're also easier to read when you're laying down. And number three, they don't hurt as much when you accidentally drop them on your bare feet. But I am here to throw you a curveball because while I think paperbacks are superior to hardbacks, if not aesthetically because of every other reason possible, I think that the superior format of book reading is an ebook. I used to hate ebooks, but in my old age, I am now noticing that having the biggest font imaginable is just better for me. You can lay on either side without it being uncomfortable. You just have to click. It's the laziest way of reading and I love it. And also in Spain at night, it gets very hot. So I have to open my windows. And if I have my light on one, it makes it hotter. And two, all the flies in Madrid decide to go into my room at that exact moment. I can just read in the dark with my window open so I can let the breeze in, but I can still read comfortably. It's just just so good. You can pry this opinion from my cold dead hands. Number 14, favorite book. If you don't know the answer to that one by now, then you're on the wrong channel. Number 15, least favorite book. I had a really hard time figuring out the answer to this question because I don't keep books that I don't like. And if I didn't like a book, then I'm not gonna remember it. It just came to mind that I read The Hundred, the trilogy, and that last book, I was awoken from my stupor. And I suddenly noticed that the book trilogy was shit. After reading and loving the first two, I was like, oh, wait, actually, this is trash. <laughs> this is actual trash. But the book I wanted to talk about today is, no, 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 not this one. It's this one. This is the one that I wanted to talk about. So this is Demigods and Monsters. Now on Amazon and on Wikipedia, this was talked about like it was a Rick Riordan book. So when I was a 14 year old child wanting to buy every single Rick Riordan book, I saw this and I was like, I need to have this because it's extra content about Rick Riordan that he wrote. Fun fact, he didn't write this. These are essays that a bunch of people wrote on the Percy Jackson wall. Not even that, on like Percy Jackson mythology. So it's not even interesting. It's not even canon. And what does a 14 year old want to do with essays that aren't even written by her favorite author. So to me, this is absolute trash. Don't waste your money on it. Maybe if you're doing like a doctorate's degree or a master's degree or a, like a school project, <laughs> then this would be helpful. But at the same time, like why do I need this? You don't need this in your Percy Jackson collection. Let me tell you, I have a very extensive Percy Jackson collection and this is one of the things that I will always advise against buying because you don't need it. And most importantly, you don't want it. So don't spend your money on this. No hate to any of the authors. I'm sure it's great, but this was the biggest letdown in my life when I was 14 years old. So get out, a good landing. 16, love triangles, yes or no? Short answer is no. Long answer is ni de coña. I only enjoy watching love triangles go down from a distance. So if it doesn't involve any of my ships or any of my favorite characters, then I'm down to enjoy the drama and the messiness of it all. But if it does involve characters that I'm interested in, or if my ship is part of the love triangle and it gets broken up by another person, then I'm like, no, I hate it. I like my couples to be serious monogamous. I have nothing against polyamory. As a shipper, I'd rather ship two people than more than two people. It's just the way it goes. If you understand Spanish, please read Memorias de Dune because that trilogy opened my eyes to love triangles because it is the weirdest one in existence. I will have to mention once again, The Host by Stephanie Meyer because that thing was insane. If it's on that level, then it's interesting. It is so unbelievably unrealistic that you don't mind. If we get to that point, then I'm fine with it. But in general, no, I do not like them as plot devices or to create drama between the characters. I mostly like two people to just like each other and that's it. If it has to be a love triangle, then let it be because one person is in love. Like it's unrequited love between someone else. It's just a crush that they have on the third person and that's fine. A love triangle is cheating, even if it's just emotionally. Number 17, most recent DNF book. If you don't know, DNF stands for did not finish. And if you also didn't know, I am the most stubborn reader of all time. So I am pretty sure I have not DNF'd a book in maybe years. Because if I had DNF'd a book, I think I've gone back and reread it later to say that I haven't DNF'd it. So I can honestly not think of a single answer for this. Probably the most recent one would be one for school. And I haven't gone to school in years. I'm not saying that DNFing is a bad thing. In fact, sometimes I really wish that I would just DNF books because they're so bad, but my brain doesn't want to. I can't convince it to just stop. Because if I'm hating a book, then I want to have read the whole book in order to my hate then be justified 
and in order for me to be able to talk about it fully and to debate why I hate it so much. So I'm just a very stubborn person and I, I need to be stopped. Please, please stop me. Number 18, what is the book that you are currently reading? Currently, I'm not reading any books, but tomorrow I'm going on vacation and I'm going to read... What? <laughs> Wait a second, I legitimately thought the book was there. Where, where, where's the last hero? Where'd he go? That does pose a serious problem for my readathon of the Heroes of Olympus. I feel like Dora, can you see the last hero? If you can, please let me know where is it? Where is it? I leave tomorrow at 10 a.m. I better find that freaking book. I've never been so confused. Where is it? Number 19. What is the last book you recommended to someone? I'm not very proud of this, but the last time I saw my friends McKenna and Brooke in person, I had just read Bride by Ailey Hazelwood, and it's just such a bad, trashy book that I needed to share that joy with someone else. So when we went into a bookstore and I saw it, I was like, okay, this is my opportunity to start spreading the Ellie Hazelwood agenda to everyone. Because as you know, I have read almost every single book that that woman has published for some reason. I have not liked a single one of them, but yes, they have been entertaining. So yes, I'm going to keep reading them and being like, wow, this is so bad. I'm such a hypocrite because I will keep reading them. By the way, if you are under 18, do not, I repeat, do not read anything that Ellie Hazelwood has ever published, specifically Bride. Bride includes, is it the right term for this, monster f <laughs> tropes? Because it is a werewolf and a vampire. And if you know, you know, specifically if you have read the dedication at the beginning of the book, where there's not with a K, if you understand what that means, then you have the same trash brain that I do. If you don't, please do not pick this book up because that should stay in fan fiction. I don't say that regularly, but yes, this trope should stay in fan fiction. I do not want it leaking into mainstream. Please, Ellie Hazelwood, stop, stop. Number 20, what is the oldest book you've read by publication date? At first I thought it was The Art of War, which you will probably be surprised to find in my possession, but honestly, I think I remember one character mentioning this in a book or in a TV show and I was like, I want to get that too. And they had a special edition and I actually read it and I highlighted my favorite passages. Let's see. Oh, it's in Spanish. <laughs> okay, I'll translate. In general, use normal strength in a battle to face your enemy. Use extraordinary strength to beat your enemy. Boom. It's full of that kind of bangers. But apparently the Odyssey is older than that and I have a copy of the Odyssey, so... There we go. It's clearly older than that. It just had a brain fart, okay. Number 21 is newest book you've read by publication date. I don't have it on me currently because my friend is reading it, but my friend McKenna got an arc of the pairing by Casey McKinston and she gave it to me and I read it. And since it doesn't come out until August this year, I believe that is probably the newest book I have written by publication date because it hasn't even come out yet. So I own every single book that Casey McKinston has ever put out. Obviously I love Red, White, and Royal Blue, but the pairing is maybe my least or second to last favorite book from Casey, but I still enjoyed it, specifically the second half. And except one very specific comment that there was in the book about Madrid and the things that you can do in Madrid that I was just like, have you ever fucking been to Madrid? Because I don't think that's humanly possible. Except from that one comment, I was like, yeah, this is fun. If you enjoy rich people and Nepo babies taking gastronomic tours throughout Europe and feeling very poor, then you love this. 23, favorite author. Favorite author. Obviously, I really enjoy Rick Riordan's writing. Lee Bardugo, Taylor Jenkins Reid, Alice Oseman, but for comic books, and maybe Casey McKinston. Those are the three authors that whatever they publish that I'm going to buy. I think Taylor Jenkins has to be probably my favorite author right now. Besides Rick Riordan, obviously. But she feels more contemporary than he does. I got to meet her. It was so nice. I also met Marissa Mayer under very, very bad circumstances. <laughs> Go watch that video if you want to see uh, the life draining from my eyes. And she was very nice as well. All the authors that I've met have been surprisingly really nice. I don't know why I expect all of them to be like terrible people, but they're very nice. Like they do their job very well. 23, buying books or borrowing books. As someone who now really just consumes books through ebooks form, I have to say that I enjoy borrowing books first because to me that feels like a trial run of the book. I typically put less pressure on me enjoying the book and less pressure on the book being entertaining to me if it's borrowed because if I haven't paid for it, then I don't have to like it and I'm not gonna have to keep it on my shelf. 
then I can just enjoy the book for what it is. If it's bad, I can be just like, oh, this is a bad book, it's fine, because I didn't pay for it. So I just love boring books so much. And also it feels like someone is giving a part of their soul to you when they recommend a book and they give you their copy to read. If it has dog marks anywhere, if it's underlined, or if they've written in the book at all, it feels like they're sharing their experience of reading the book with you. Nowadays, if I want a physical copy of the book, it's either of a book that I have already read and loved, or a book from one of my favorite authors that I know I'm going to like. 26. What is a book that you dislike that everyone else seems to love? I'm very scared to say this, especially because my friends McKenna and Brooke love her. Emily Henry, I don't hate her books by any means. I think they're entertaining and they're solid reads. They're just not meant for me. I don't know what it is. I think it's the characters. I don't know if they're too quirky or they're too entitled or privileged. There, there's something I, I, no, I don't have, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't have anything against her or her writing, okay? Her books have just never clicked with me. Maybe they're just too American for me. Actually, that might be it. I've never thought about it that way. She's a lovely lady though. We got to meet her at a midnight release party that she wasn't supposed to go to. So I have nothing but respect for her. 25, bookmarks or book ears? Or no, 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 <laughs> no book ears, dog ears. Well, bookmarks are well and good and I have an extensive collection of bookmarks that I know and love. When I pick up a book and there's no bookmarks anywhere to be seen, I can just dog ear it. Specifically when I'm doing reading vlogs and I don't wanna pause to talk to the camera every couple of pages, I just dog ear the page that I want to comment and then when I'm talking to the camera I can be like oh when I read this and I know exactly where the page is because I'm not going to put like a hundred bookmarks in my book just to talk about it later on but usually if it's a new book then I don't want to dog ear it I'm not insane and if it's someone else's book I will never dog ear it because once again I'm a good person but once again I'm an ebook reader now and you don't need a bookmark for that which is ebooks just are getting all the points number 26 what's a book that you can always read now if you've been on my channel for like more than a day, you know that I love rereading books. It's one of my favorite experiences as a reader. You just get so much joy from it. You get so much more from a reread than from the first read. So there are many books that I could read many times, but my go-to read. Lately, the books that I've reread the most looking at my shelf are Red, White, and Royal Blue, The Hating Game, and Icebreaker. Picking up a contemporary is so much easier than picking up a series or anything fantasy related. So that's unfortunately why I'm going to have to go with those three. Even though they don't necessarily represent uh, my reading taste, it's just like easier to pick those up for like a pick me up or to stop a reading slump. Number 27, can you read while listening to music? The short answer is no, I can't. The long answer is that I can speak and understand more than one language. So if the song is in Spanish, I cannot read while listening to it. If it's in English, nope. If it's in French, it'll be a bit distracting. And if it's in Portuguese, it's not gonna bother me. I can listen to songs if they're in languages that I don't understand, but at the same time, the music and the beat is still distracting. I have a very, very hard time reading a book while someone else is watching a TV show. Unless it's in a very weird language that I have never heard of and I'm not interested in. If you're reading and then there's dialogue going on outside your book, it's very confusing. My favorite place to read is probably the beach because the water is the perfect soundtrack for a book. Number 28. One POV or multiple, multiple POVs? POVs? Multiple. More is always better, that's why I always say. 29. Do you usually read books in one sitting or over multiple days? I am a zero or a hundred kind of person. I am very intense. So it's typically a mix of the two. I don't usually pick up a book if I don't think I'm gonna have over an hour to enjoy a reading sprint. So I guess it's more like a marathon. <laughs> so what I do is typically when I start a book, I really want to have a couple of hours to enjoy it. So I get at least like 60 to 100 pages in because those first 100 pages are the hardest one to get through. The first day I'll either read like two or three hours and once I'm hooked, I will try to marathon it as quickly as possible. But unfortunately, life usually has other plans. Sadly, I'm a working adult. What I usually do is I work all day, I do my hobbies and my video editing in the afternoon, and I leave my book for after dinner. I'm so old. I feel so old having scheduled reading time, but it's just the way life goes sometimes, guys. I remember when I was doing my master's degree, I've never read more than during that last exam period. Like, I read 12 books in a month and a half. What's wrong with me? Why can't I do that anymore? Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave! 
with a box of scraps! And lastly, 30 books you've read because of the cover. Let's do a little montage, why don't we? And that's it for today. You probably know a lot more about me than you wanted to at the beginning of this video, but I'm glad we got this introduction out of the way. Please leave a like if you like this video. Comment down below what your guilty pleasure read is because I am very, very interested. And once again, if you know a fantasy series that I could be interested in, please let me know down below. I usually take recommendations from you guys pretty seriously because clearly you're watching me so you have good taste. Subscribe if you haven't already and click that bell button to get notifications every time I post a new video. I post videos just like this every single Friday and I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye!